if I can face the right direction. One day we'll actually kick it. This is my spot. All right, we did it Aha, without Seth. All right, guys, we're live. Uh, welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton. Dave's on the Mighty Mix. Got Allison. You like Allison, right? Not Allie. I've been calling you Allison forever, but I think when I first met you, I called you Allie for some yes. reason. Because Allie McBeal was in, yeah. but now that's like over. I go by either. Allison's professional. Allie yeah, it sounds fun. more, I like Allison, yeah. right? So we're going to go with Allison today. We're here with Allison. This is Advanced Flash. So if you don't know this, we stream online. That's why I said we're live. Everybody who's standing here was like, what do you mean? Um, so if you guys uh, are unable to attend, uh, you can watch us online at uh, uh, youtube.com slash Adorama TV, Adorama TV. Um, and yeah, you can see that stuff. You don't do that now because you're here, but uh, you guys can do that in the future. So if you can't be here, you're on a date, the family reunion, work, whatever you're doing. If something comes up, I go live, jump on, it's worth it, I swear. Um, it is advanced flash, so I'm gonna make some assumptions that you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you are watching online, uh, or here and you don't, keep in mind that we did basic flash or intro to flash like last month. So still watch, get what you can from it, maybe go back and look at that one if you're, if you're missing some of the words. Obviously ask if you have questions. If it's too basic, I might just kind of be like, I'll do exactly that. One more time. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> we're gonna kind of do this. So this particular session is to go over all the little, so all right. There's lots of kind of what I will call gimmick. I use the word gimmick a lot, it's my word. I was using salty, but Seth said that, that, was, that I shouldn't use the word salty. I don't know, I kind of like salty. But it. So there's lots of little tricks and gimmicks and things that you can do with Flash that people kind of harp on a lot and you see the words bouncing around online, high-speed sync, HSS, you know, rear curtain, and multi-pop, and, and they're really useful tools to have in your kit when you want to kind of add something. Your shot should not be about that. If the only way your shot is going to be good is by adding one of these techniques, you should rethink what you're photographing, in my opinion. If your shot only stands up with a special technique, if it only stands up with a gimmick, if it only stands up with the color gel, if it only stands up with that, you need to rethink your photo. Your photo should be strong no matter what. So keep that in mind. But we're going to kind of go over some of those things, because normally in my flash classes, I, I always say, that's blah, blah. I don't talk about that, because you know it's kind of relevant to only certain things. So we're going to do all that fun stuff now. Um, I am, uh, I will attempt to name all the equipment I'm using because we get lots of questions about that as I go. I probably will forget to do that after like two minutes. So if I'm using something and you wanna know what it is, just ask, I will tell you. Um, we are uh, working primarily on the Pro Photo Flash today. Generally speaking, that's the flashes that I own. If you have some other kind of flash system, you have speed lights, you have you know, uh, Flashpoint, which is the house brand here, you have Ellen Chrome, you have Dynalite, you got uh, Calumet, Balcar, Norman, Novatron, Nor I said Norman, Speedatron, Broncolor. Well, if you got Broncolor, I mean, come on. <laughs> if you got Broncolor, come here and teach this class. All right, so if you have, you know, whatever. Most of this stuff is going to work no matter what system you have. Uh, keep that in mind. A lot of it I'm going to do manually. Some systems do it automatically. I'm going to do it manually because I think it's more fun and also because not everything does it. So things like multi-pop, we're going to do it ourselves, right? Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, I'll start off really basically though with the, the super basic, just as I always do. One of the reasons why we use flash is for control. And we're gonna use our flash to get rid of all the light in the space first. If I don't get rid of all the light in the space, then you won't really be able to see the effect. So I'm gonna start that way. As we progress, I'll start mixing flash with the available light because that's one of the advanced flash techniques. But we're gonna start off that way. I am using, for the first time live on, on set, uh, a Nikon Z6, which they loaned it to me, so hopefully I can figure out how to put it in a rear curtain sink, otherwise somebody up here is gonna have to show me how to do it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm literally just got it. Um, we're using that, I'm tethered into my MacBook using Capture One, which is how I always do it. I recommend that if you are teaching a class at around, no, if you're shooting anything and you can tether, it's a good idea to tether. What tethering means is that you're going to plug your camera directly into your computer. That is going to allow you to see the images as soon as you shoot them. It's going to allow you to see them as they actually are, not worrying about your screen. You can zoom in. People can see it. Your clients can see it. I have tethered all over the place, so I don't want to hear your excuse. <laughs> like, literally, I've had people I've throw my bag on the ground and put the laptop on top of it and tethered. You can do it if you really want to do it almost anywhere. 
Um, it is worth it, so I recommend you do it. I use Capture One, it's the best tethering software. I'll say, you can get a free uh, trial for 30 days, go to CaptureOne.com if you want to do that. Uh, I don't get anything for that. Although, I would if you followed my link, but don't worry about it, just download it and try it. If you can also tether on some level into Lightroom, but we don't talk about that. All right, so, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our flash is the only thing affecting our shot, and we're gonna set our camera so that none of the light in the space is affecting our shot. This is the way that we always start with flash uh, when we're doing like a controlled portrait. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our camera at its lowest normal ISO. So within the normal range, which is 100 for this camera, we're gonna set our camera at its fastest shutter speed that it synchronizes with flash. Not considering things like high speed sync because we haven't got there yet. All right, that's 200th of a second for this particular camera. We can take this camera, we can then point it at, at Allison. You can come a little closer. Get a little closer. All right. I'll turn my flash off. It's weird that you turn things off by holding down the on button. Remember they always find that weird? Okay, anyways. So this is kind of convenient, right? This is a mirrorless camera. I know, I'm getting into this uh, the 21st century here, right, with the mirrorless camera. The 21st? 21st, we're in the 21st century, right? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> with the mirrorless camera. Uh, you know, I got the screen on the back. The easiest way to do this now is all the ambient lights here, right? I'm looking at her. Uh, and yeah, my screen is black. I can literally just adjust my f-stop until I don't see her anymore, right? So I don't want it to just barely be there though. What I want is to be very much underexposed. The reason why I want it to be very much underexposed is because in post, I might decide to do something like pull up shadow detail, right? Has anybody ever pulled back shadow detail in post? You know you have, come on now. If I'm only a little bit underexposed, I might get some of that ambient light coming back when I do that. So I wanna be two to three stops underexposed. I'm gonna start off like around, uh, let's say, Seth was shooting the other day and he shot at 6.3, which is really cool and trendy, so I'll shoot at 6.3. Uh, and I'll make a photo, and we're gonna look at it. There it is, it's beautiful. All right, so we have the black frame. Black frame means none of the light in the space is affecting our shot, but, and I actually just got a DM about this, because I'll explain it a little bit more, I always grab, another reason to be tethered, I always grab my exposure slider, just like I'm doing editing, and I pull it over until I can see her. There she is. Once I see her, I look over here, 2.69, 2.89, so I'm almost three stops underexposed. That's fine, that's good enough. I'll live with that. Okay, you know what, no I won't. I'm gonna go to eight. I'm gonna go to F8, sorry Seth. All right, so I know F8 will be, very, will be even more underexposed. All right. Now we're there. I do need to quickly change something on this camera because I was shooting earlier and I realized that I am in the wrong white balance. So I will turn it to flash. So I'm putting my white balance onto flash, which is the lightning bolt. Usually flash, there we go. Uh, and I'm also going to turn off the, uh, once I've got that set, I can turn off the thing on my, you know, if you have a mirrorless camera that uh, applies the live view setting. So now I can actually see her. I've done this before, and then people are like, how do I shoot though? I can't see anything. Well, now I just turn that setting off, now I can see, right? Does that make sense? All right, so I see her there. She's looking good. You're looking good. Now we can start to sculpt with flash. That's how we know it's working. So this is not an advanced technique. I'm just gonna do this very basically. To get a basic flash exposure, we're gonna take a flash, I guess this one. This is a Profoto D2. Now what you're about to witness, oh, it's my finger very broken. What you're about to witness is uh, a $2,000 flash making a very bad photo. <laughs> I'm just gonna point it right at her. Although maybe not, maybe people will like this photo. Who knows, you can never can tell, right? We shouldn't, uh, we'll do a Rembrandt light for you. All right. I'm gonna take my light meter. It's important that you understand metering. Am I jumping in and out, audio wise? It's important that you understand metering if you're gonna do this because we've gotta know what our lights are doing, right? So I'm gonna put my uh, meter on, it doesn't do 200 this meter, so I'm gonna put it on 250, whatever, it's close enough. And I'm going to point it at, all right, first of all, I'm gonna turn off every other flash except for this one, so I'm gonna to go to group A. Oh, that one's firing too. So that's B, I think. There we go, just that one's firing now, right? Okay, so I'm gonna meter it. Ah, 
I'm getting 11.2. Now, I could just set my camera on 11.2, right? Because I know that's more closed down than f8, so I'm totally fine. But I want to be in control. I don't want to change my camera every time the flash is a reading, because then when I use multiple flashes, what am I going to do? So I'm going to adjust my flash until it gives me the reading I want. So I'm going to go, uh, this is in group A. So I'm going to drop it a stop. We'll test it again. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're basically ready. Make sense so far? I'm going to look through the camera. Oops, I took a picture without looking through the camera, but it's OK. And there she is. Oh, is it even focus? It might be even focus. Yeah, mostly. OK, so that's how you get a correct exposure with a flash, right? Come back next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So now, what we want to do, the first thing I'm going to do, just because, I don't know, I feel like it, is I'm going to, that's how we eliminate all the light in the space and get a shot. Now let's talk about bringing light in, like constant light, if you want to work with light. right? That's a pretty simple one, right? And it's going to make a difference. When you're doing that, you're essentially making two different exposures. right? You're making an exposure for the flash, exposure for the, uh, the constant light. When you're doing that, they need to match up on certain things, right? When you make an exposure, there's three parts to it. The exposure triangle. That's not like a weird gang sign if I do that, right? Triangle. All right. Um, in your exposure triangle is your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, right? Generally speaking, although not technically scientifically true, but generally speaking, your shutter speed does not affect your flash, meaning that I can be any shutter speed. Um, as long as I'm not picking up the available light, I can be any shutter speed equal to or less than my sync speed, and my flash exposure will be the same. If I was in a completely black room, and I did a 10 second exposure, and, and I got that black frame, and then I did it with the flash, it would look exactly like we just saw there, because it's basically the same thing, right? You understand that part? It's two different exposures. So the two things that, that are the same is your ISO and your, your aperture. Your shutter speed can be different because it won't affect your flash exposure, but it will affect your ambient exposure. Does that make sense? So we have two exposures going on. We've got 200th of a second, F8, 100 ISO, and then we've got whatever, shutter speed, F8, 100 ISO. Right? Those are our two exposures. Um, instead of using the light in the space, which isn't very good for this, I brought my own light because I mean, who would I be if I didn't bring my own light, right? So I have, um, I brought my own light. This is, am I blocking stuff? I always block stuff. This is a, uh, a Dato light uh, DLED 7. I'm remembering to say, say what stuff is. I'm doing a pretty good job, right? This is a bicolor focusable LED fixture, right? So a bit, in, of course, dimmable. So I can take this and I can light, let's say we'll, we'll make it a fill light. So we'll put it in the front. So there's two benefits to putting it here. And one problem, OK? So the benefit would be um, when the fill light is straight on, no matter what you're using, a flash or a uh, constant light, I don't have the fear of creating opposite shadows, right? So if I fill her from the front, right, I know my flash is causing a shadow on her right side, right? If I put this on the right side of my camera but straight on, I can bring that shadow up. I'm not going to get a shadow going to the left. right? If I go like this, like you see a lot of diagrams. I don't know who wrote these books. You see a lot of diagrams where they go like this. If, if I show up on, in your studio one day and I see this, you're in trouble. Don't do this. I don't know who does this. Never do that. right? But this is where you put maybe a reflector. And the reason why you can put a reflector here is because it needs to bounce that light back, but also because the reflector will never be stronger than your key light because it's bouncing light back because of the inverse square, right? I know none of you know what I mean by inverse square. Just nod your head. Don't worry about it. We all just say that. Nobody really knows what it means. All right, so I've got this light on. Whenever you're using a hot light, make sure you say to your model or your subject, I'm going to turn the light on. And then what will they do? Look right at it. They always do the same thing. So I put my hand in front of it as well. All right, so we turn the light on. This is, a, like I said, it's a dimmer. Now, I'm using flash, which I know the white balance is around 5,500 Kelvin. This is a bicolor light, so I'm setting it at 5,500. Is that me? Wow, all kinds of weird stuff going on here. All right, and what I'm going to do is here, you would think, right, like I'm looking at this and I'm like, hey, I can just look at it and adjust it. Oh, well, no, I can't, because what does this mean, right? The, I don't know what the flash exposure is. So what I need to do is, is meter this. 
So I'm gonna take my ambient meter. So I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna adjust my meter to ambient. Uh, yeah, we can kill that, sure. A little bit. We'll cheat a little bit so you guys can see better. I don't know which one it is. But every time that I try, I ask this Seth to turn the lights off, it's always a big thing, but when he does it on his own demo, he just goes like this and all the lights go off. I'm like, oh, well, I see, okay. So, I said there was two benefits. I only said one of them. You guys don't care. The other benefit is this. When you are in a dark space, what happens to people's pupils? Right, you get big black, uh, that's the pupil part, the way back. So it goes really big, right? So you lose some of the color in the eye. When you're outside in the bright sun, it retracts down really small, right? And you get a lot of color. So shining a bright light in somebody's face, I mean, they're not gonna like you, but still, shining that in their face is gonna make that happen. So we'll get more color in the eyes, and we can see your beautiful brown eyes. I knew that. So what has to be the same for our ambient exposure as our flash? What has to be the same? Name one of the things. The ISO. The ISO. What's the other thing? Aperture. And your aperture. Exactly. So I'm going to, I mean, I know this compared to the flashes is not very strong, so I'm just going to crank it. Because again, it'll blind her and she likes that. All right, so I'm going to take my uh, meter. I'm going to point it at the light source. I'm going to take a reading. It is 2.0 at 125, right? None of that's right. I'm just going to go home. No, so now I can literally take my meter without doing anything else. I'm just going to bring my shutter speed, bring my shutter speed down. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to adjust my shutter speed. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can kind of see it, right? As I adjust my shutter speed, see how the aperture is changing? Mm -hmm. Easy as that. So I'm just going to adjust it until, so one eighth of a second is f8, right? So that should fill me nicely, right? Now, I can see there's a shadow on the wall, plus I don't want my fill light to match my, uh, my other lights, so this is going to look terrible, but I'm just going to show you for the, for the matter of, uh, of locking it down. We're one eighth of a second, F8, 200 of a, uh, no, 100 ISO, thank you. I'm going to adjust my shutter speed. This is the other reason, by the way, I turned off the, like, you can see what it looks like, because right now it looked like this blown out craziness if I was looking at it like that. So now I'm going to try to not take the picture before I'm ready. Okay, here we go. How come it's not going up to the little duty? Doobie. All right, let's try that. There we go. All right, there she is, right? We have a shadow on the wall. We have two shadows on the wall, right? Because it's balanced, right? It looks terrible. That's not what we want, but you see how it worked, right? We were able to bring the flash in. Um, she's there. We want our actual. Um, our uh, shadows to be darker, right, than, than our, our main light. We want a flat light on our face, right? We want it to be darker because we want the shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our light. Well, let's do two things because, you know, number one, because people are going to ask us, how do we get rid of the shadow? How do you get rid of a shadow? Come on, somebody knows how to do it. By raising the light, you just thought I was going to do that. You're trying to cheat. All right, yeah, so you need to change the direction of the light. There's always going to be a shadow. We want to move our light the opposite direction of our, right? So our shadow goes in the opposite direction of our light. So we can drop it to the ground by doing that, right? We're still going to keep it in front of the camera. We're also going to dial down our power now. Actually, we don't need to dial down our power, do we, Dave? What can we do without dialing our power down? Let's say we don't have a dimmable light. We can change our shutter speed, right? So if I want, let's say my shadows to be like three stops darker, then I need to come up three stops to my shutter speed. Oops. I think this is in thirds of a stop. Okay, I didn't look, but I just clicked on it. What I normally do there, guys, so you don't have to like worry about math. There we go. Right. So we don't have to worry about all kinds of math. What I did there was I literally, I know my camera does thirds of a stop increments. I want to go three stops. I just did nine clicks, right? You can get used to doing that once you have your base set up. So we can see, right, this is now filled in slightly and we can control how much it's filled. It looks almost identical, right? Because our shadow pattern is the same, but look at the shadow here. Shadow filled in, shadow dark, right? If we want our shadow to be more filled in, we can literally just play with it, right? So that's three stops. Let's go two stops. Right? Filling in more, right? 
Make sense? That's easy, right? That makes sense so far, guys? You're getting it, right? OK, good. Because exposure here is going to be key. Because what we're doing, like I said, is we're making two exposures. Now, if I want, let's say we want to play around with movement, right? We know that flash will stop any movement that we're doing. So if I have Allison move and we're getting rid of all the ambient light in the space, so let's say we go back to where we were, 200th of a second. Actually, just to play around a little bit, I want to do one test. I'm just going to shoot a shot at 200th with this light on, see what happens, because we didn't do that. OK. Yeah, it's not, I mean, I can see it in her eye in the specular highlight, but it's really not doing much. So I think we could even leave this on if we want for now. Right? But let's do a test. We're going to go, how do you like to move like this? Well, you got to move, that. your head's staying set. You got to, right, we want to move you. Yeah, exactly. Right, she's going to move like that. OK. So first I'll do one without the, without the light on. OK. Go ahead. Like, dramatically, go. And go. Yeah, it's two hundredths of a second. You're not going to catch it. OK. And, and go. Right? All right, so here's our shots, right? No ambient light coming on with ambient light, right? So they look both frozen, right? Why? Because even though I'm shining a bright light at her, it's not affecting my shot, right? So let's start to dial this in, right? Let's actually get it to affect our shot a bit. Let's go down from 200th of a second. Where did we see it? At 60th, it started to come in a little bit, but at 30th, it looked pretty good, right? We're actually getting some decent uh, exposure. So let's try the same thing. We'll start here. Oops. OK, hold on. Go. Yeah. Right? Now, we're starting to get a little bit, just a little bit around the edges. You see that glow around her hair? That's basically it, right? It's barely there. Look, look at that smudge. That's the ambient light, right? So it's not that much there, right? I can bring in more. Let's go down to an eighth, because that was pretty much balanced with it, right? So let's do an eighth. All right, let's go. And hold on, let me pre-focus over here. OK, and go. There we go. Oops. Wow, look at that big gray spot. <laughs> OK, now we're getting some movement, right? She's like, no? OK. Bionic, no? OK, sorry. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. All right. So if you want to do a shot like this where you're going to have some kind of movement or blur, we got to think about where she's moving, though. You can't just be like, hey, I'm going to do a longer shutter, and you're going to move, and I'm going to have a great shot. Go on Instagram. It'll be all kinds of good stuff. Let's think about where she is, right? Let's think about what's going to happen. Let's start her on the constant light, and then she can move to the flash. When she gets to the flash, it's going to freeze her, right? So at the constant light, she'll be blurry until she gets to the flash. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is I'm going to put you right exactly in the constant light, and then when I when I say go, you're going to move and turn and look towards the flash, but also physically move your body like you have been doing. And go. Yeah. OK. Not really enough time. This is what we're going to find out, right? You need a decent amount of time to actually make this kind of stuff work properly, right? Because you need movement, you need time. So what are we going to do? How can we get more time? The simplest way to do it is to, I mean, I could. I have this powerful flash here. I could go to f16 or whatever, but I can also dim my light and make it less bright, right? Although before we do this, if I can just take a second, I don't really like the light pattern on her, so let's make a nicer light. Where's my beauty dish? It went missing. I swear I had a beauty dish, guys. It's been here for like 16 years. Is, is that the, oh, there it is, okay. It took me dropping everything on the ground to find oh, it. Yeah. All right, so thank you, Div. This is a beauty dish. This makes people Beautiful, yes. Good. All right, so we're going to put the beauty dish on, on this. We're going to bring it a little bit to the side. So you're going to end up like this, looking at the beauty dish. Yep, exactly. I'm turning the light up about one stop because I know that the beauty dish is going to eat some light. I will re-meter re it, though. Um, there is something called TTL. But I feel like when you're doing TTL, that's the basic flash close. We're all manual over here today. We don't mess around. Actually, I'm going to do TTL later. Don't worry about it. All right, so I'm going to re-meter this. Just for the sake of uh, convenience, 
whenever I'm remetering my flash, I'm going to go back to 250 on my meter. The reason for that is when you mix them together, the meter will do, some meters will do a combined exposure and stuff. And so get used to meeting, metering them separately and, until you know your meter really well. So I'm at 8.2 uh, 8 at 250. So I'm going to actually turn this off for a second. I'm going to have you look towards the beauty dish, like your final position, like go like, whoosh. yeah, let me just see what that looks like. Good. All right. All right, she looks what? Beautiful, yep. Yeah. That's perfect. Thanks for coming, guys. I don't, I don't, we can't really beat that at this point. So now, now we're there, right? So here we go. I can turn this light on. We know at one eighth of a second, she just doesn't have time to move. So we want to give her, I don't know, let's give her some more time. So let's give her, what do you want, a second? Is that enough time for you? All right, she wants one second. So since I know now how much time I want, it's just a matter of coming in here. Oops. It's a matter of switching the mode on the, on the meter. Metering, boop, going down to one second. So here's the difference, though. I did that, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm great. I know what I'm doing. But look, it's 16.5 now, right? That's not right, is it? So now I have to adjust this light. So I'm, gonna, I'm at one second. I'm going to put my finger on the dimmer. I got my finger on the dimmer. All right. Now, I will do a test. It's always important to do tests because honestly, we get paid by the number of pictures we take. So taking more pictures is always good. There's probably some kind of a way to, to there we go. That looks pretty ex well exposed at one second, right? Perfect. That's what it looks like when I wake up in the morning and put my glasses on. <laughs> or late at night if I've been drinking. All right, now we know, yes. When you adjusted the second meter, what did you adjust it down to? I adjusted it to match the other shot for now. Okay. So F8, yes, that's a good question. So I adjusted the dimmer on the light to get down to the same exposure. So I'm matching the exposure right now. Because I'm doing like a, a pop and blur, I want to match the exposure. If I was just using it as a fill light, you know, I would have it be darker. Mm -hmm. But I want a good exposure on your face. All right, so I'm going to pre-focus on, on this. So can you hear the camera? Mm -hmm. OK, so when the camera goes off, Wait like a moment, and then turn and do your final pose. Like go like, Wah. and you should probably make that sound. Right? Okay. Okay. And okay, what happened there? I was just testing her. I didn't turn the flash on. Here we go. Okay, what happened there? I knew that was going to happen, then it didn't happen. What do we need to use? This is the advanced flash class. Rear curtain, that's right. Now, since I have no idea how to do rear curtain on this camera, because I just got it. <laughs> no, I think you do it right here. Let me see if I can figure it out. Uh, I think it's this thing, flash mode, rear. There we go. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it did, actually. OK, cool. All right, that was super easy. <laughs> wow, all right, every camera should be like that. All right, here we go. So a moment, and then wow, OK? Nice. There you go, right? Here she's like, I'm in regular light. And she's like, I'm beautiful, right? <laughs> now, because of the direction of this light, I'm lighting the background, right? So we're getting kind of a see-through kind of boo, you know, shot. We could do a similar shot to this by keeping this light off the background. We can get it, it more dramatic, right? And this is, this is the advanced flash class. So we've got to be dramatic, right? So if I take this light. Rumor has it, this will also make you beautiful. Now, keeping this the same distance as it was, I shouldn't have to re-meter it. That's what lazy photographers say. All right, so we're going to re-meter it. Ah, it's 11, see that? You know what, though? I'm going to use the inverse square law. See that? I just inverse squared you guys. Well, oh, all right, I guess the inverse wasn't quite inversed. That was the outverse square. All right, good enough. OK, here we go. I'm actually going to go to 9. 
This one actually goes to 11, but I'm going to only go to 9 for now. So you're going to look at this light. So look right at it. Yep. Actually, uh, bring your whole self this way. Good. Perfect. And try to move a lot. So your feet end up like, you might even, yeah, and then like maybe do like a wide stance because you want to end up, yeah. Yeah, because you want to end up like over here. So, yeah. All right, you got it? All right, you're too far that way now, though. So, so keep your wide stance, but move this way about a foot and a half. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop. All right. In the name. OK, here we go. And oh, she's good. She can hear that. There's no way I'd hear it. See how it's more dramatic now? Mm -hmm. Right? And if she waits long enough over here, she's relatively sharp. Now, if we can nail this, this is a big one, right? Can we kill all the overheads? Boy, it's not even that late we're killing all the overheads. If you can really extend yourself, we can try to get your face as sharp as possible. You're going to stay here? All right, guys, I'm doing it. Where did I say this one goes to? 11, right? I'm going to 11. Why am I going to 11? Because I want to give myself a little bit more shutter speed. Remember, everything goes together, right? Your aperture will affect both your flash and your shutter. So when I go to 11, I got to give myself more time to make my ambient correct. But also my flash is going to be dark. So now I have to turn my flash up, which I can do over here. It's roughly one stop. All right, so here we go. We're going to do a test. Oh, you got to go further than that. Like a lot. That was like really slow. All right, so what you got to do, that's better though. So what we're going to do is we're going to be like, one Mississippi. <laughs> Just like that. Did I move the light when I did that? Probably not. Okay. So you got to physically move a lot. Got it. You got it? You can be like, pow. Whoosh. Okay. Without the All right. She's got this. You got this, girl. All right, here we go. Nope. You keep moving away when I move. Come a little closer to me. There we go. Stop. Right there. And, oh, oh, that was pretty good, actually, I think. And I, no, there we go. Yep, right? Practically two exposures, right? Look at that. She moved a little bit there, so you can actually see the specular highlight, and her eye has its, has its own little uh, laser. But see, now her flash shot is outside that one, right? Make sense? No? I feel like you're not loving it. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> I want to try something else. So her face has this glow, this blur glow, right? Because the light is lighting the front of her face, right? Which means you have this, and that's like a bright part of her, right? She's very bright. You're very bright. We can make the front of her less bright by putting the light behind her. Right, exactly. Online, everybody thinks you're so smart because I pretend like you gave me the answer. All right. No, they really are smart here, I swear to God. All right, here we go. Let's see. Turn towards, turn towards this light so I can see. No, no. And then come physically where you're going to be. Boop, and then turn sideways. OK, what I'm doing is I want to look to make sure this side of your, let's say that way. I want to make sure this side of her face is mostly in shadow. There you go. Mostly, you know. This is a free demo, guys. You're not going to get a perfect shot. Just come on. All right, here we go. Wow, you really have like a good, she's like, I don't know if I'm going to move or not. Maybe I'll move. OK, I'll move. See, now this part's darker. You see that? See how we're getting more darkness here? Because it's not coming across her face as much. Actually, you have like a little like pause here that you've made. All right, we can do it. We got this. Yeah, a little bit a little, like pause and then quick. Yeah. So it's, it's got to be like a delay and then a bang. Turn your face slightly towards me right there. OK. And there we go. Yeah, there we go. Right? We're getting nice, clean. That really, is, that really does make you beautiful. That's what they call it a beauty dish. Look at that. You guys see what's happening here? This is what they call pop and blur, or in this case, blur and pop, right? Or a shutter drag, however you want to call it. Essentially, we're using a long shutter speed to achieve motion, right? We can do it in another. Oh, is Seth here yet? OK, I'm going to steal it before he comes. All right, so <laughs> the other way to do it is we can move the camera. We can move the camera, right? <laughs> or 
We can move, the, I, mean, I have a zoom lens, so I make these lenses now that have multiple focal lengths, and when you move the lens, it changes the, you ever seen these? They're called zoom lenses, so I have one. Of any quality. Yeah, of any quality. If you have a zoom lens of any quality. All right, so if I take my zoom lens, let's see, and I zoom, we're just gonna leave the light where it is. This is not ideal yet, but I just wanna quickly do this because uh, I wanna get a basic setup here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Actually, I need you to be in the proper light for that, so come this way. Yep, good. Let's see, we'll just do a quick test without moving. I just want to see the exposure. All right, I lied, I'm going to move. Okay, you see what happened there? That's because I lied to her. That's the face that models make when you lie, right? All right, so, we see, see where she is? That's like my portrait from junior high. You see that, right? Okay, in order for her to make, actually, this could be kind of cool if we, okay, you know what I'm going to do? We're gonna do this with you turning your face. Oh, this is gonna be good, I'm feeling it, guys. I'm feeling it. If you just sit in the background too much? Okay, that's probably because I kicked it when I was dancing. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is this. When it goes off, so you're gonna look at me, you're gonna look this way, and when it goes off, you're gonna just go ever so slightly towards the light, and then you're gonna turn straight on me and be like, bah. Like you're a bad bum. Yeah, that. Yeah, when I say the light, yeah, it doesn't right. I do that a lot. Yeah. All right. All right. So look at me. Good. And cook, and then poof. Oh, that was fast. Oh, I forgot to move the. Uh, oh, that's not bad though. But that's not what I meant to do. Yes, it is. I did that on purpose. All right, here we go. Same thing. Uh, slightly this way. Physically move your shoulders. There we go. And boom. Right? Big constant light, little flash. If we want the opposite. Zooming out. That's right. She zooms out. Now there's a little tiny alley living inside of her head. Right? That's super creepy. You don't really want to do that. Let's forget that ever happened. Nobody saw that. It's kind of bad. There she is. She's like, oh, what am I doing in here? All right, so the other way is definitely better. Um, you know, this is how we learn. <laughs> no, it's fine. You can do it either way. Well, if we can do that, she would just have to, we'd have to move further this way when you do it. All right, let's do it not creepy, because you know, my mother watches this. All right. All right, here we go. So move physically this way more. Good. And then there's a bigger move when you go. Boom. Now, notice too, there you go, right? It's like she's like, ooh, coming up into her face, right? The only problem is I focused at the other end, so she's out of focus. So if you, what you need to do is pre-focus there, if you're gonna do it this way. So go ahead and, uh, yeah, go towards, your, go to your ending position. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna pre-focus, lock that in. Okay, go back. And I have no idea what I just did there. Who knows what I just did? It's very confusing. <laughs> Apparently you can't do that. There must be a manual focus thing on this. There it is, okay. Hold on. Let's go back to your starting position. I mean your ending position, there you go. You start and end in the same place, just like in life. Well, that doesn't sound very good. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? No, I'm good. I'm switching to manual focus once I get it locked in because it, it's trying to track her and I don't know how to turn it off. Okay, go back. I mean, yeah, to your other, yep, there you go. I'm gonna zoom back this way. Huh, why did it do that? Why did it do that? No. All right, sorry guys. When I zoom the lens, it's taking a picture. I guess it doesn't want me to do that. I'm gonna do it this way. Do I go back to, to the starting position? Slash ending, yep, there we go. A uh, little bit, there, okay, I'll the camera. Right, there we go, right there. Let me focus. Okay, good. Now, I'm just going to turn it back to manual. I'm just going to take my finger off the trigger, right? Now go back to, okay, you're in the hot spot. All right, here we go. Boop. There we go. That should have been good. There we go. Now she's sharp. Yeah. And she's growing out of her weird small. It was still better the first way, right? I should have stopped. If you nail it in the first <laughs> shot, guys, just stop there. Like that's, you just, you know, just, just stop. Don't go home. You know, don't, 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 don't stand there and do that because that's actually terrible. 
All right, there you go. That's much better. Pretend like the other thing didn't happen. We can crop that, whatever. Okay, but you get that, right? Well, yes. Does this camera have the same autofocus? I have no idea. You're saying a lot of things that I have no idea. No, I think so. I literally, they just gave me this camera. I just put it in manual. I think this is, oh yes, I think this is an autofocus lock right here. Let me try that, you're right. Let's see. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna focus using this and I'll try to use the autofocus lock. I, gotta, I have to set this up actually. Okay, and go. Oh, I forgot to zoom. And you forgot to move. We're basically just, yeah, we don't know. All right, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's good. She has bigger hair. Yeah, that, that's not creepy. That is, that did work. Thank you. Yeah, she, the button in the back focus uh, locks a little thing. That's not ter, that's bad. Yeah, that's okay, good. Nice. Well done. Good, good, thank you. Oh, we're not focused. Let's try this, actually. Let me get right up in your grill. I don't know how close this focus is. We're about to find out, though. Hmm. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'm a little too close there. All right, so I'll, I'll do it this way. I'll start this way. She moved out of my shot. Because, all right. Let me see where you're going to end up. Okay. This is the tight shot. So I'm pre focusing. I'm just taking the shot because it was cute. All right. So, all right. I just did it anyways. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I just do stuff. See? Oh. All right. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Look towards the light, Caroline. The other light. <laughs> it's important to use as many lights as possible and then just keep saying look towards the light just to confuse the model. All right, I'm free focusing using the button in the back. This is why I do all my photo shoots in front of a live audience. <laughs> There's so many buttons on this camera. Okay, where is it? There we go. All right, now go to your other font. I'm going to go wide. I'll go only partially wide. Okay, and go. All right, I did less of a zoom. Just because I think like a big face is better. I don't know. I was just messing with it. You can play around with this. You might have a 18 to 17 trillion zoom or whatever, and you can do even longer zooms. But this is kind of working. You got that? You figured that out? Now, the other thing that we can do is we can actually move the camera like this. Hmm. Let me look. Yeah, this seems fine. All right, so I could do something like this as well. You stay perfectly still, you know, as much as possible. Okay. All right, and we can move. We can move the camera. We can move ourselves to try different effects. Right? That didn't look very good. All right, so let me do it with light behind you. It works better that way. Come stand in front of this light. There we go. Oh, actually, you know how this we, this is how we used to do it, Dave. Remember how we used to do it? Face the audience, or I'd step with you back to the audience, back to the audience, just like Jim Morrison. <clears throat> okay, that is very heavy. Hold that. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're gonna move the beauty dish in here. We're gonna do a quick test shot. So for my quick test shot, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave it at f11, and I'm gonna go back to to two hundredth of a second. Why am I doing that? Because I just want to see what the flash is doing, right? Okay, I'll go somewhere like there. Okay. Boom. There we go. Right? You guys are all gone. Now, if we drag, let's go back down to a second. You'll stay exactly how you are. Right? The light's on that side, right? So I moved and not much happened. But now, right? Now we get a double. Why? Because the light's on this side, right? Now the light's catching her. See it over here? 
That's basically, so we have to think about that, right? Where's our light? You're not seeing it so much. Here, we're seeing more, right? And you can kind of, actually, we can turn that light up a little bit. Hold that for me. Blind Dave over here. Turn it up a smidge. Good. It's all lit up. All right. Question? Thoughts? Can you use two constant lights for the advanced flash photography class? Hmm. Hmm. Let me think about that. Well, if you use two constant lights, you'll only get blur. You won't get any solid. So yeah, you could shoot with two constant lights, but you won't get the, the frozen shot, right? Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Let me do this, actually. I'm going to focus. Yeah, my head's getting my. Spend a whole bunch of money to basically put what is essentially an on-camera flash, right? That's what we're doing here. All right. So if we go like this, I'm going to focus like this on her, and then I can turn my camera, right? Ooh, trippy. All right, here we go. Right? Extra trippy. Ready? Right? Boom. Wow, no, that's too much. Okay, forget that happened. <laughs> that, that didn't happen. We didn't do that. What do you got? We can do the same zoom thing if we want. Well, that's not, okay, the opposite of what we want. Okay, let's try that. Right? And we can, and so on. So we can basically, you can control these things, obviously. I'm just kind of showing you what would happen. If we go to, let's go to, I'm going to go to 5.6. Why? I mean, why not when it comes down to it? When I go to 5.6, I have to adjust my flash exposure, right? Well, how many stops? Two. Now, why am I going to 5.6? Because it's going to make the background brighter, too, right? So it, it affects my total exposure when I do that. And I can get lots of weird things like to that effect. Let's just do this for the last one. We'll turn this off. So now there's virtually no light on her in the front. Right? So now we're just getting the drag behind her, right? We're, we're getting mostly clean light on her face. We're getting some light because where the light originated was over here is going through the back of her head. So we could, in theory, you could, uh, you could put something behind her that was black and then you wouldn't get it through her head at all. Well, we don't have that. So. Well, we do. We have a flag. Let's do it. Grab the flag. You know, you know what to do. Come on. We, we practice this all day. No, 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 that's not a flag. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It should be. <laughs> this, is, this is rehearsed. We do this all the time. OK, so we're going to block this part of the frame, right? Like that. Perfect. Yeah. Actually, come this way so you're in front of the flag. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Perfect. Uh, a little bit less. All right. because I'm in rear curtain sync. Let me go first curtain sync. OK, so it's the advanced flash class, so we had to go in rear curtain sync for a while to like kind of impress you guys. Rear curtain sync, this is how many times, see what I just did there? That's about as much rear curtain sync as you'd ever do in your whole life, because like that's it. You don't need it anymore. All right. The, OK, so what's happening, right? The flash is firing at the end. By the time I've already moved the camera past her, the flash is firing, so she's off my frame. If I do first curtain sync, uh, turn the flag, you're not quite blocking her all the way. There we go. If I do first curtain sync, she'll be exposed, and then I have a drag, right? So now she's there, and nice and solid, and we blew her over, right? See that? Actually, I should drag. Yeah, perfect. I could also do this, right? You notice where it's black, and I didn't move over, is, is solid with nothing behind her. She looks thrilled, but otherwise, uh, <laughs> And other, other over here is all trippy. So actually, we're going to get this now. I'm feeling it. We got it. You ready? We got this. You're doing a good job. One more time. I'm going to use a wide angle lens. Why? Whenever you're, like, you're trapped and you're like, oh, this isn't coming out, go to wide angle. It's like people love that. They're like, oh my god, wide angle. That's so cool. All right, there we go. Right behind her. Come a little bit more to uh, camera left with the flag. Nope, that's camera right. 
Yep, perfect. There we go. Now she's nice and clean. Background is all squiggly, right? Boom, right? Right? It's important too to take at least three or four photos before you nail it so that the audience thinks that like, oh God, is he even gonna get this thing? This is very important. You never wanna get it right away because it looks too easy. No, but do you see the concept here? Because it's black behind her, thank you. None of this light that's over here is, is affecting going through the back of her head, right? So if you wanna get a clean pop and blur that doesn't affect your subject, they, you mean to make sure that no light is behind them. That makes sense? That's why you could do it you know, we actually did it over here. It's the exact same thing, right, except for that we used a controlled light. But this is the same concept. Well, wow, we shot a lot of pictures. What was I doing? Jeez. Right, this is the same concept, right? Over here, do I have a tripod? There we go. Over here, Right? Using two different things. Here I'm using the available light plus a flash, and I'm using a black flag to knock this off. If you were shooting, let's say, at a party, and you wanted to have some cool effects, you could carry a black piece of foam core, have somebody hold it behind the person being photographed, pop them with the flash on your camera or whatever flash you're bringing, and do the same thing I just did there to make it all wild, right? You could do this anywhere. Because here I'm using the light in the room, right? Here I'm using controlled studio light, right? And it's black because no light's hit in the background. Does that make sense? It's the exact same concept. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, light is the same. You just have to figure out how you want to use it. Does that make sense? And, and to answer your question, if you used two constant lights, what would have happened is you would have got blur on her and blur on the background because the constant light is the drag. Yes? Seth is asking if you're using pop and blur. Oh, Seth asking if I'm using, yeah. I'm doing all of his techniques before he gets here. OK. So that's pop and blur. Oh yeah, we're doing perfect. Okay, perfect. Now, what haven't we done? High speed sync. Nobody cares about that. Should we do high speed sync? Yeah, yeah. I'll just talk about high speed sync for a second. I know you guys love high speed sync. Okay, so I have to lean on my tripod when I do this. It's one of those things, right? High speed sync allows your camera to go above the synchronization speed, in this case, 200th of a second, with a flash. Now, you're immediately saying, well, geez, why wouldn't I just always use that, right? Because why would I want to be limited to my uh, sync speed? I'm not limited, right? High-speed sync, depending on your system, works a bunch of different ways. In Profoto, it pops the flash multiple times. So basically, as the shutter curtain's moving, it's popping the flash multiple times. What that means is it's using more power, OK? In other systems, where it's high sync, or whatever they call it, it's just a longer flash duration, which actually is the thing you don't want, which basically makes things more blurry. Because your flash duration, uh, the shorter it is, the more sharp your images are. So why would I ever use high speed sync besides just being cool and making videos on the internet? The purpose of it is this. Sometimes. Like if I'm standing outside, right, in the middle of the summer, and I'm going to make a photo of Allison, and I don't have a light meter, what's my exposure? 16. 16, right. It's f16 at the, uh, the shutter speed equal to the, the, uh, to the ISO. So basically 1 125th of, 1 125th of a second f100 ISO, f16 should give you a perfect exposure outside, right? That's a, a proper exposure, not a good exposure. What if my, flat, my camera, let's say, for instance, only syncs at 1 125th of a second? And I don't want to shoot at f16, right? It's, that's too much in focus. It's like, I don't want that. I want to isolate my subject. I spent a lot of money for a 2.8 lens. Like, what am I doing here? f16, that's for amateurs, right? So that's what high-speed sync does for you. You could go, hey, I want to shoot at f4 or 5.6 because I want to get the background more blurry. But when I do that, then my shutter speed needs to go up. And then it crosses the sync margin of your camera. So if you're standing in a studio like I am right now, there is virtually no reason why you would ever use high speed sync. It just it doesn't make any sense. You don't need to. I'm in control of my light. If you're not in control of the light, if you need a, a left, less depth of field and you want to shoot more wide open, that's what it's for. That's what it does. That's all it does. It's not magic. 
It is magic, but it's not magic. The reason why you see, it, it actually originated in small flashes, like camera flashes, and you'd see people out like in the desert doing it, and they'd have like a bunch of flashes. And the reason for that is, it still takes the same amount of power. Like it's popping your flash multiple times. So it's not like it's magic where it's like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna be able to shoot now at a higher speed. You still need the same amount of power. So people would group flashes together to make it reasonable to shoot like that. That's why people do that. Nowadays they have things like the, the B1X that, that goes to, it's 500 watt seconds, you can do it with it. So you're pretty good uh, with this magnum reflector on there. You could probably do it with one head, no problem. No reason to, to really do it inside the studio. I can't ever imagine. You certainly don't want to do it to stop action. Definitely not. That's not what it's for. Because almost always it's going to make your flash duration longer. Because your flash is cranked up in power. And when your flash is cranked up in power, your flash duration is longer. You want short flash duration to stop action. So if you are in a studio environment, the ideal situation is to turn your flash down as low as possible and get rid of all the ambient light. That will give you the most stopping power for a flash. We haven't done splashes in a long time. Maybe I'll do a splash demo. You guys want to see a splash demo? Where we throw stuff in water? You guys don't care about that. You'd rather see a girl. I get you. They just look at me like I'm crazy. Oh, did I put that on your foot? Uh, there's like a thousand square feet of space here. I put it right in your foot. Yeah. OK, does that make sense for high speed sync? I, I'm not going to do it because it doesn't make any sense. Like, you'll be like, oh, OK, you're doing high-speed sync. Who cares? Like, it doesn't really matter. In fact, the only way I could even do it in here is if I crank my ISO. And then why would I do that? It's, it doesn't make any sense. All right. High-speed sync. Now let's do something fun. Let's do multi-pop. Multi-pop is super fun. What multi-pop is is you pop the flash multiple times. Multiple times. Yes. Hey. So where you get, in this instance, can I just make that one go? Yeah, I go like this, right? Nope, I go like that. Someday I'll learn how to use Capture One properly. There we go. So here we've got exposure, kind of exposure, flash. With a multi-pop, we can go pop, pop, nothing in the middle. Both of them are sharp, awesome, done, easy, perfect, boom. Whew. Can we do it in one frame? I think we can do it. You ready? We can do it. What am I going to need to do this? Besides, you know, confidence to stand in front of you guys and say, I can do this. Two flashes, right? I can't use one flash. Or can I? Can I do it with one flash, Allison? Sure. I can. can. You guys, no. Can. You need two flashes. <laughs> All right, we're going to use the Magnum on one side. Why? Because the Magnum is awesome. Just saying Magnum is fun. What are you going to put in the light? Hi, Magnum. It's also a good TV show. In the 80s, I guess? In the 80s, Magnum? Yeah, okay. I was just a baby. He had a Ferrari, though, which is pretty cool. Tom Selleck, the mustache, you know? He was on Friends later for you, know, you, for you youngsters. I think he was the same character. That's the character that Tom Selleck plays, the guy with the mustache. All right, all right, here we go. We're going to use two flashes. Now, you could use something like a pocket wizard. I know what you're saying. Pocket wizard? No, somebody told me I could buy a cheap sink and it would be just as good. You could use something like a pocket wizard, Multimax, that allows you to do multi pop inside the unit. If you do that, you're just using a function of the unit. It's not your style. You didn't make it up. Everybody does it. We're not going to do that. Why? I don't have a pocket wizard. I'll do it manually. Why? Because that's what I have to do. In fact, I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it. All right, I need two volunteers. Come on. All right. Because you don't want to do it, that's why you don't do it. All right. It's just like school. All right. We're only taking one frame, so don't screw this up. <laughs> Are you guys ready? This is difficult. We're going to do it, though. Come on this side. You get the beauty dish. You get the magnum. You see more magnum-y or more beautiful. All right. I don't know about this. What do you think, guys? All right, we're doing it. We're going to go to F16. Why? because I want to give them as much time as possible to do this. And I don't want, and I don't want the ambient light in the space to affect my shot. 
So I know that at F11, I was like around a second. So if I go to F16, I probably have about two seconds to work with once we turn the lights off. We'll do it in a second, but you leave them on for right now. First thing I want to do is set my exposure of my flash at F16. Let's see, I'm going to go to flash mode. I've done this before, I swear. All right, here we go. Did they, did they both fire? Yes, I did. All right. I'm going to point it at the first flash. Okay, you're going to have to move when you do this, though. So get in your first position. Is that your first position? Is that enough space? Oh, you want me to look at the camera? Yeah, you've done this before, clearly. Okay. Uh, that is perfect. That is fantastic. If you could do exactly that, that would be phenomenal. All right, come back to that first position. Oh, you nailed it again. She's good. Oh, I'll tell you. Don't worry about it. All right. What does that say? 22. 22. All right. So we got to turn you down one stop, right? Because one to 16. So is that 6.9 right now? You're going to be five nine. You're probably more like six two, but you're going to be five nine for this. <laughs> so I made that height joke. Did you like that? So I'm going to do that now. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the magnum is, is uh, magical. All right, so on our beautiful side, what do we want to get? 16, right? Four, really? That's all you got over here? Four? Come on. This one's only at a four. Oh, I can't see. All right. So that's five, six. Oh, I lost count. I'm just going to go over here. That seems about right. Oh, that felt good. Did you feel that? <laughs> Let's hear that again one more time. Wow. That's too much. That's how you know you're shooting beauty right there. It's like, ah, pop. I mean, as much as it's cool to be like, I'm a natural light shooter, I have a 1.2 lens, nothing's cooler than that. Come on. Listen to that, sorry. OK. I could do this all with a remote, but that'd be way too easy, right? I, instead, I have to reach up here and do it. I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty close. Pretty close is, is, is about as much as we're going to get here. So we're going to do a test. Now, we're going to nail this in one frame, but first I have to do a build, big buildup, right? So first we have to do each piece individually, so you have to wait for it. So get ready. All right, first we're going to just fire this light over here. This is in group. I thought you were an expert in portfolio. You told me when you, we talked before the show. OK. All right, that's in group B. <laughs> Oh, who's this guy? All right, so go to the beautiful side. Good. Yeah, hold on. I'm focusing on Seth for some reason. There we go. <laughs> Seth Miranda. Yay. Where is it? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, oh, what happened there? Oh, because I had two-second exposure, and we were talking. And what? Well, why am I doing a two-second exposure? Who knows? We need to eliminate the light in the space, so Dave has to turn off all the lights. Everybody online, you haven't seen this yet because it's, there's a delay, so we'll quickly do it before they see it. All right, go back to the, go back to the beautiful, beautiful side. This is the beautiful side. Did some music just come on? All right. All right. That's pretty beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I'm going to make this look better. To make the light look better, you just move it to the left, just like that Beyonce song. Just like the Beyonce song. Isn't that what that song's about? Move the light to the left. What? That's the song, the Beyonce song. To the light to the left. Yeah. No? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you're not as hip as I am, clearly. Only all right. Only. I can give you a pair. I got a few extra. All right, so, all right, that's the beautiful side. Let's go to the Magnum side for the bad bums. How do you move the, OK. What is that? Oh my god, hold on. Give me a, 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 a boom box I can hold over by my head. It's the last song at the bar mitzvah. No, this is, this is what do you call it from Say Anything. Yeah. OK, what did I do there? I got confused by Peter Gabriel and turned out didn't change the light. <laughs> All right, so we're going to switch this to, I'm going to turn that off. That's A. So when you get old, you do that stuff. Uh, that's off. 
I'm going to go to B to turn it on. There we go. That's right. What? Is that A? Yeah. Are you sure? Sure. All right. Let's do it. Did I just do the wrong thing again? Did you just, did you just screw me up, sir? No. No, I didn't. Perfect. Magnum. OK, now what you're going to do is take this shot and this shot, and you're going to go into Photoshop, right? You're going <laughs> to. OK, no. All right, you have two seconds to nail this. We have to do it in one frame. It's the last frame on the roll of film. Right. This is where you don't screw it up. Are you ready for this? This is where you come in. I'm going to teach you right now. It took me seven years of training to learn how to do this. You have to do it the first time. Do you see there's a white button up there? Which one? On the back of the light. You see the white button? Yes. Press that button. I'm pressing nothing. That's because the light's turned off. Come on. <laughs> Killing me over here. Are you A? Yeah. What are you, B? You can't see it. I have to jump. Apple box. This is legitimately an apple box right here. <laughs> All right, you're in A. You're B. What are you doing over there? <laughs> All right, you see the button? Yeah, the white one. Yeah, watch this. Ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you have to go first. Okay, let me try it. So I'm, okay, let's test it. <laughs> All right, do you need me to show you? Okay. okay. Just press this button. Yeah, let me see you do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't screw it up. Do not screw it up. <laughs> Whew, that is definitely the most difficult one. I don't know why that one's harder to press, but it is. You're going to start on this side. I'm going to turn this off. When I, when I go like this, you're going to press your button. Then she's going to move. When she gets into position and she looks good, wait for the right expression, you're going to shoot the next button. You got two seconds. That's like the world. All right. Come work the camera. Come work the camera. Come, 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 come. All right. OK. All right, so look through the camera. Go to your first position. I th there should be a little box on her that's in focus. Go, go to the, are you the first? Yeah, it's an icon. Is it there? This is the button right here. You see it? Is it focusing on her? Uh, no, it's on the other side. OK, damn it. All right, so use the little joystick. Are you an icon person? Use this joystick and move it over. Some pops and blurs and yeah, poppy and blurs. Flash and stuff. Yeah, okay. flashed. No, no, it'll stay. It's on this side. Why is it on that side? No. Move it with the joystick. I did. No, no, no. It's on. Uh, is it correct? Is she in focus? Focus first. OK, so when you press that button, I'm going to hear it, and I'm going to drop my hand. You're going to fire. When, you, when that fires, you're going to turn and look over here. You're going to assume a good pose and a proper expression. When she does that, you're going to take the picture. Yeah, it looks like this. Right? Is that still in the frame when she does that? No. Uh-oh. I moved it over to her eye. Take a look. Oh, what did you just do? You screwed it up. All right, go back to the first one. OK, let me see the second one. No, yeah, she's there. Hold on. Go back to your first spot. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to pre-focus. Once she's in focus there, I'm just going to throw it in manual focus. OK, we'll take that step out of there. Is that OK? Now you don't have to focus. You just got to press the button. OK. Can you do it? I, I, I have faith. Maybe. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Lord, sir. Is that working? Yeah. Sir, that one's harder. Yeah, that, this one is harder to do. No. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> yes, I do. All right, just to make it easier for you, I'm going to let you use the remote. But I'm going to change the channel on this one. See, I have to change the channel because otherwise it'll fire both flashes. I'm going to put you on channel four, OK? So now in theory, is it on four now? Oh, I'm pressing the button. OK, there we go. 
That fires that one, but not that one, right? All right, can you press that button? Let me see you try it. That white button, you got it? Ha, ah, nice. You could even sit over there and do it. No, no, but be here though, like, okay, we're part of the team. Whew. All right, go back to your position. We're gonna focus on her again. Make sure she looks good. Let me know when she's in focus. Oh, I just, sorry. Oh, you took a picture. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what happened. Ah, it's no, over. My bad, my bad. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. You can just take it if you think, if you got confidence. Just do it. Did you do it? Yeah. Well, I mean, tell us you were going to do it. <laughs> sorry. So this is how you get a black frame. I think you may have shot too fast. I think I dropped my hand too fast. No, actually it was perfect. Hey. In one frame. Hey. It's like a death row album. There you go. <laughs> Sharp. 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 Okay. Hey, Ali. Hey, Seth. <laughs> All right, so I was at WP. No, I'm not gonna make fun of people. Yes, I am. All right, so let's add one thing to this. This is the advanced flash class, after all. I'm going to turn the light on. OK, look right at it, just like people do. OK. Can we do it again? This time, you're going to have to drop your hand and everything, because I'm over here. I'm working the hot light. Daniel's in the shot. Why did I stay? Why did I stay back there? What am I doing back there? All right, hold on. Actually, though, that worked pretty well. Um, we need to lower it a little bit. Allie's uh, slightly less vertical than I that's, thought. That's so even though I'm removing the arm from this, you can still charge for it. I could have done a really complex thing to make the arm like uh, go low, but we're running low on time here. Or I could use a short stem. I think we're good. I don't think she's that vertically challenged. Oh, it is black. Yes. You can do it. Dan can do it, right? I'm building for this. He just wants more junk on the ground, like when he does a demo. <laughs> That's right. All right, this is it. You ready? Oh, hold on. Let me get the one that changes color. No. Do it. I can't. Why not? Rainbow ghost. They're all the rage. I'm not going to rainbow ghost because I won't be able to do it right. All right. Here we go. Well, let's look at our exposure for a second. Let's put the star filter on there. OK, that's not terrible. All right, except for this idiot in the back with his hand there. All right, that looks pretty good. Feeling good? Is it in the center? Uh, let me center it. There we go. Get positions. Actually, should I focus it? Let's focus it to make it more focusable. There we go. Am I blinding the heck out of you? Yes, I am. Is it able to focus when you're doing that, or do I need to turn it off for a second? Uh, turn it off. Oh, Nikon. <laughs> right. OK. Whenever you're ready. Now. Ooh. All right, that's a terrible picture of me. <laughs> And now I have a new Facebook profile picture. That's your new Tinder shot, man. What? What? What happened there? What? What happened there? Really? Come on now. Come on, guys. Uh, I'm like a creep. <laughs> Honestly, God. 
All right, I'm going home. That's it. I'm, I'm done. Leave. You guys can go home. All right, let's get a good one now because, you know, my reputation is staked on it. If you don't mind, I'm going to stand over here. I am so sending that in. Face, that's going to be my Facebook profile. Okay, so what's happening? It's focused, so it got brighter, so it's, we're killing it. So let me just dim it down a bit. I won't stay over here after, though, because if we learn that, this isn't going to work. <laughs> Let's try that. Let me, let, me get, let me get over here so I'm not in the picture. You can't get it now. What are you doing? What's happening? I'm very sad. I really, I, you had it. You really did. You had it. Okay, what's happening here though? You're not moving over far enough, I think. So let's look through the camera and let's get her to achieve both positions. Okay, beauty position. Is she far enough over? Yes. Okay, non beauty position? Yes. Really? Okay, but it's I can see the. I land. Oh. Oh, you're flashing before. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Wait till she achieves the perfect pose. Let's use the flash more in here. And then I'm right. Yeah, yeah. Make sure she's looking right at the light and she's like this. She's going to be like this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, when you stop yeah. You got two seconds. You don't have to rush. <laughs> yeah. You got this. I'm pretty certain you're going to be in the Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You live for this. We did get into one frame, though, right? They told me you didn't have coffee all, all demo. I didn't have a coffee. I was going to bring you a coffee, but then I said, ah, I don't like you. <sighs> That's right. Happy Dr. Pepper. You, you're drinking sugar instead of coffee? No, I didn't drink anything. Oh, guys. Guys, really, what's happening? Oh, 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 oh hold on. Oh, hey. All right, it's not bad. All right, all right, hold on. I think we have, okay. Are you going to be happy just with that? you feel happy with that? No. No, right? This needs to be centered on the lens. Move out of that way for a second now. All right, let's center. Okay, and let's make sure that when she moves to her positions that she's, that this is dead center on her. So go into your... Right, stand so this is in the middle, now shift your weight. Yes. Boom. I'll be right here. Yeah, and then let me see the other side. Better? And make sure you turn your face. And don't fire until she gets to the good position. All right, here we go, one frame. I would actually take a little inch more now. Oh, even more, go for it. I don't, I'm not even looking at the camera, I don't know why I'm deciding. <laughs> Power wise? Oh, turn the power down? Turn the power down. All right. Is it too hot? <sighs> Hold on. Well, actually, I think it's as low as it goes. The backlight's as low as it's going to go. <laughs> we could, now the backlight's as low as it goes. We can't get any darker uh, by turning it down. What we could do is use a shorter exposure, but. I think we're barely getting it now, so I'm not going to push my luck. What, what, are you not going to fire anymore? Are you just over it now? Like you just totally gave up on us? What happened? <laughs> I thought you were doing such a good job. <laughs> well, I, 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 you did? Well, I, don't, I don't see it. I, I don't, where, where is it? Where, all right, let's see. I believe you. I do. There's just evidence that says that you didn't. It did. Flash. It did. Yeah, after it, 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 I felt oh, after. All right, see what you slow. All right, all right, here we go. You got it. <laughs> I didn't have time to get a coffee. No. That felt okay. There you go. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, you got a little lens flare, which is good. Yeah, uh, hmm. All right. Not bad. Are you satisfied with that? If you are, Dan. <laughs>
I, are you satisfied? <laughs> I'm not satisfied with it at all. Don't let no. him dictate your life. <laughs> so what's happening here? The light on the beauty dish side is not quite as beautiful as it should be. So what do you do when the light's not as beautiful as it should be? You move it to the left. Let's move it to the left. I just told you that. Just like the Beyonce song. All right. One more time. We got this, guys. I'm feeling it. Got the lens flare. Does anybody have a star filter I can borrow? No. I left mine back in 1992. <laughs> if you have a star filter, I will so star filter this right now. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. I feel pretty good about, pretty happy about this. There's one other way to do it, which we can do because we have seven minutes left. And that is to use another flash back there. Hmm? Hmm. We could do that. However, if we do that, what we're going to get is possibly another head, depending on where we're at. So I don't think we want to do that, but you could do that. I don't think we want another head. It'll be the back of our head, too, which nobody really, you know. And I'm pretty happy with this. Now that we moved this to the left, let's see, beauty dish side. Beautiful, right? Magnum side. Magnificent. There we go. All right, guys. Good job. You may retire back to your seats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, you figured it out. Now you've operated that light. You put that in your resume. OK. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We can have the lights. All right, let's get the lights back, the house lights. OK, so with the exception of the mostly useless uh, high-speed sink, um, <laughs> for in this particular occasion, we've covered everything, I think, that uh, I wrote on the description of things I'd cover. Uh, is there any questions? Was there something that was confusing you want to see more of? More or less of? Less of? I can't take it away at this point, so yes. Do, do people actually ask for that? Yeah. Do people ask for it? Do you just only do what people ask you to do? I thought you were a rebel. No, like I said at the beginning, yeah, nobody's going to be like, hey, I have an idea. But sometimes it suits a purpose for a, a feeling that you're trying to create in an image. It can create a certain mood or texture or feeling in certain projects. And if you check out Seth's work, <laughs> last ex-witness on all the social stuff, he does a lot of special effects stuff. And these techniques work for that. This by itself is just whatever. We're just playing, right? This isn't really anything. But there's a time where this might be cool. Maybe it'd be useful for something. And could you just, what I was joking about earlier, could you just take the picture and put it in Photoshop? Sure. But if I could nail it right here, right? right? If, I, if, I, if I legit, you know, if Ali was hiring me to do this, and I was like, sure. Let's roll back. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do this and this and put it in Photoshop. I mean, I would fire myself. You know, it's like we can nail it in camera, right? We can get it. And when you get it in camera, it's badass, right? Oh, it's ass. I was trying not to say ass all day. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Nailing it is going to be impressive. Also, it makes them go, wow, you should see the shot I got on that shoot, not a week later, like, oh, yeah, he did this. And whatever. You know, it's just something you can do. OK? And honestly, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. But you would do this like five or six times. And really, if you just loved two different ones with different frames, you could still do it in Photoshop. Like, you could still do it. But getting it on the spot is just a cooler feeling, something you can actually do. You achieved it. It's what you're, you're working with the camera. You're a photographer, right? So that's it. I mean, a lot of these techniques are just fun, right? We could have combined things. On this one, we could have, instead of holding the light steady in the back, somebody could have went like this with the light, right? That we could have had blurs and, and craziness like we had, you know, uh, like we had here, right? This, yeah. So I'm at some party, right? And it's kind of stupid in the background, but I want to get a cool set of portraits of people that are there. I have my, my friend hold a black card behind somebody. I just make the background blurry and funny. Yeah, it's just cool and different, right? It's like just something in the camera I can do, and I'm not seeing all the drunk people behind. Not saying you were drunk yet. Um, you know, that's basically what we're talking about, right? It's just techniques that you can learn. Once you know the technique, you can involve it in any way that you want. You know, you see Ali standing at a party in front of a black card, you just take a picture. OK, questions, thoughts, concerns? Is that Fernando? Yeah. Oh my god, Fernando! Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, who? <laughs> that is the Fernando. OK, so. Guys, got to come to Adorama. We got sp Fernando Spottings. You know, it's crazy. Fernando Spottings. <laughs> OK. Dave's here. All right. So you never know what you're going to find when you come in to Adorama. Yes. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't see you because you were in the dark. 
Let me shine this light on you. No. Do you, uh, what do you do if you don't have a photography or when you are exposing each class? Like, what would you recommend? So what do you do if you don't have a light meter? but you attend the advanced flash class. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. But what I would do with these lights is these have what's called TTL built in. So I could use that to get my exposure. That'd be the simplest way if you have these. If you have completely manual lights and you have nothing, then the best way to do it, first of all, I wouldn't do it when I have a client in front of me. I would test and get familiar with your equipment. So what you would do is you would take these lights and you would go, OK, well, if it was a speed light, let's start from there. Let's say they're small flashes. Small flashes have what's called a guide number. With the, the guide number tells you the power of the flash. You can literally do the quick math and say she's four feet away. You divide the, the guide number by the distance, and that's your f-stop. OK? I did a video about that. Um, otherwise, see, they go. Learn something every day. If you don't know the guide number, put your flash in the middle, make an exposure, grab your exposure slider, which we did in the beginning, right? Move it until you get the proper exposure. Because let's say I shot it and looked like that. I'd be like, oh, that's dark. Then I would grab it and slide it over and be like, OK, I brought it up a stop and a half. And then I would turn my flash up a stop and a half. Right? What if I'm not tethered? Well, then you just have to look at it and, and, and go by the histogram. What I would recommend is if you don't want to or you don't have the budget to purchase a light meter, but you want to have more pre precise lighting, I would get what's called a PhotoVision digital target. PhotoVision? Yeah. It's basically this target. <laughs> I have like a 1,000 of them. I never have one with me when I do this. It's basically white, black, and gray. It is uh, neutral, so you can use it for white balance. But if you hold it up and you photograph it, you will get, uh, if, you, if you have a proper exposure, you'll get a perfect histogram. So if you photograph it, your histogram will be one side or the other. You then adjust your exposure until it puts it in the center, and then you know you have a good exposure. And that's very inexpensive. They're like 40 bucks, so, and good to have anyways. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. What I would say, though, is if you're not in the position to buy a, a flash meter, just get familiar with your equipment on test before you get somebody in front of you so you kind of know OK, this distance, I want to be at half power. And you'll get used to it after a while. Like Once you know your flashes, I make it a point to meter everything when we're doing a demo so you guys can see how it's supposed to be done. But I've used these a lot. I probably could walk in and get them pretty close just by doing it. But that's because I use them all the time. That doesn't help you if I do that. right? So that's why we do it this way. Other questions? That was a good question. Good question. Free piece of candy for you at the cashier. What is the maximum exposure time that you can do or you, that you should do when you're doing this? It depends on the space you're in. If you're in a completely dark room with nothing, you can go as long as you want. You know, um, It just depends. You want to make sure that it's dark enough so that none of the ambient light is affecting your shot if you're trying to get. Uh, that. Because the reason why the background is black is because none of the light in the space is affecting our shot. right? And that was two seconds. right? Two seconds. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right. You, you are right. All right. <laughs> Other questions? Any questions online? I will be, when are you here? You know, you don't know? I might be going live Monday. Oh, Seth might be going live. Uh, you are or you might be? Uh, Seth might be going live on Monday at 5, probably, on Facebook? Yeah, uh, and YouTube. Uh, and you, oh, and YouTube. You know, nice. You know what it's about. Yeah, awesome. So check it out on Monday. It might be going live at 5. I will be back on the 6th of June, where I'm discussing posing. That's going to be hard. People ask for that all the time. I'm going to do a posing one. Wow. I know, I know. I, don't really, I know. We're going to get, and I know it's going to happen. They're going to be like, well, what if the person is two feet taller and six inches wide? I mean, OK, we're going to get a posing person. I'm going to show you guys how to pose and work with the subject. <laughs> um, that's happening on the 6th. That'll be awesome. The week after that is Inspire. All right. If anybody's part of our meetup, don't even check your email now. There's like a 1,000 emails that just went out of all the cool stuff that's going to happen, lots of stuff happening uh, right down the street. So if you guys are local or if you're not local, come to New York. Um, if you don't know, follow me, Daniel Norton, photographer. What's your Allie. stuff? Allie McBeal? Allie Blackman. Allie Blackman. Do you just Allie Blackman? You have your name? Yes. You have your name on social? Yes. That's pretty nice. I wish I could have got Oh, I do have my name on social, Daniel Norton. So there you go. <laughs> Allie, Allison Blackman. <laughs> if you want to follow her. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Seth, yep. They can sign up for the walk, though. Oh, there's a photo walk. Yeah, that's what Inspire. Yeah, all the Inspire stuff. Yeah, if you guys are coming to Inspire, there's all the stuff that's popping up in your mailbox now, or go to the meetup group. Uh, so what's our meetup group? Uh, free, free NYC photo workshops. Free NYC photo workshops, or, or go into meetup and type in Adorama. You'll see there's a yeah. bunch of stuff that just popped up. We're doing a photo walk together. Yeah. So you guys better be ready to carry some equipment, because I do not carry equipment when I do photo walks. You're carrying my stuff. Hands, so. 
Yeah, so you're gonna, I got coffee in my hand. So we're gonna do a photo walk together, that'll be awesome. We're gonna do a booth demo yeah, we, with, with, can we say it? Say with it. Joe McNally, woo -hoo. Joe McNally. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna shoot something with Joe McNally, which is pretty awesome, so it's worth coming to Inspire just for that. Um, and also, there's, I'm saying it because it's gonna happen. There will be a live performance of my theme song before my demo. Oh. Yes, I've already got it. Drew said he was gonna do it. There's gonna be a live performance. Get ready for it. Anything else? It's like two no. Chords, right? It's like two chords. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. I only own a guitar. I don't know how to play it. But Drew will play it for us. We'll be good to go. Last questions. Last questions. Last questions. No, no, no. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, you can clap and stuff if you want. That's good. Okay. Make it finally go over. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't have to. It just, if you don't clap, everybody online is like,